What's up? Hope everyone's having a good day and is ready for another video in the series we like to call Underrated Throwers. Now before anything, I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And hope you guys will have enjoyable holidays. Um, but let's get into this. So today we got probably my third or fourth favorite hammer thrower of all time. Uh, Vadim Debutowski from Belarus. Now, people might say, who know the sport, uh, how and Sam how is Vadim Debutowski underrated, you know, Olympic silver medalist, um, a world champion, and a plethora of other medals, and the, I think, fourth longest thrower ever. Uh, he has a PR of 84.90, which is insane. I think he's like the fourth or fifth. Or third. Is he the third? I forget. He's like top five hammer thrower ever in terms of distance. Um, But I think he's underrated for a couple reasons. One, those medals come with a little bit of a caveat. Because he did get banned for life for doping. As did his um, cohort, uh, uh, Ivan Tikon. Ivan Tikon technically won this. This is the 2005 world champs which in my opinion is the greatest hammer throw comp of all time uh you can at me but it's insane how basically every throw that these two took were cha the championship record and it's weird um they and it was in the rain i know that doesn't matter that much in hammer but when you're throwing over 83 freaking meters in ha in a in the rain that's crazy because a lot of people can't do that in dry weather. So that alone is kind of crazy. And um, I also think, I think he, it's it's weird because I say a, a caveat because technically Vadim came second, but Ivan Tikon got his medals taken away. Um, they were both banned for life um, after the 2008 Olympics. Um, but Ivan Tikon, Ivan Tikon came back in 2016 to win, um, I think the silver medal in Rio and in, in the Olympics, but Vadim just retired after 2000. Well, I guess retired with big quotes. <laughs> um, but it's weird because they took a lot of Ivan Tikon's medals away, but they did not take any of Vadim's, uh, Vadim Debutowski's medals away. And I think that's because I think the ruling is you you have to they have to prove that you were doping during that competition, which is why uh, I think Randy Barnes, even though he got banned for life, still got to keep all his medals and his world record. And um, I think they proved that Ivan Tikon was doping during that um, during these comps, but I don't know why they couldn't prove Vadim um, was. Uh, not doping during these comps, but whatever. He got the medals, so shoot. Even though I think Ivan Tikon's still better than him. Um, as you can see from... Uh, oops, that's a terrible line. This, which is, I think, still the championship record. Um, the fact that you come in second place it, with an 82-60 throw is absolutely insane. And if you just look at this series, 78, 80, 82, foul, 80. And then I think he throws like 81 or 82 on this throw as well. <laughs> That's a pretty crazy, crazy comp. Not to mention he competed in one of the most competitive eras of Hammer. Facing, you know, Ivan Tikon, Koji, Prismos Cosmos, Simon Zielkowski, um, Christian Pars, and a whole bunch of other plethora of 80 meter plus Hammer throwers. Hammer was stacked in the mid two thousand, the the early to mid two thousands, um, where basically you had to throw eighty two plus meters to even win a comp, which is absolutely insane, you know. And Hammer's starting to get like that again, but um, yeah. Another reason why I think he's underrated, besides all that, because I guess I didn't really give a reason why he's underrated yet, but. One of the things I think is very underrated about him is he's probably also the most unique hammer thrower I've ever seen in my life. Because I'm going to play the video for you real quick. Um, and you're going to see. 
So let me just play this real quick, and I want you to see if you can see anything weird. First of all, I hate this video because it doesn't show the... Th he does three wines that are really relaxed. Oh, I guess you can kind of see them a little. Let's see. One, two... Oh, you can see them. Cool. So he's very relaxed in his wines, which is very not typical for... A thrower of this caliber usually you wind a lot faster and a lot longer and you reach like a lot longer and you have a lot more tension through the wire i mean he has tension but i mean this is just a casual wind and then like his third wind he gets a little more into it and i don't know if you guys noticed it's pretty hard to miss i want you to just look at this first turn if you notice he kind of he sits super hard. Like, he's he basically doing an ass to grass squat <laughs> in his first turn. And then he stands up. And you don't really see very many 80-plus meter hammer throwers do that. In fact, I can't think of a single other one that does that. And I think that's very unique and very underrated for the simple fact that, you know, you're taught very... You're taught you normally, like, the first turn is a certain way and basically everyone else does it this way he's the only one i've seen that like sits down like that and actually like looks different to other throwers like a lot of throwers a lot of hammer throwers like they look they, they're pretty much the same like a lot of like 80 meter plus hammer throwers they do all the same stuff like they look they look relatively the same in terms of technique vadim and to some extent Ivan tikon is probably and then maybe uh, um, Kibway Johnson are probably the ones where you can say though those are probably the most unique hammer throwers in terms of technique that do things like vastly different in terms of the way they look. And that's why I think he's underrated because he breaks from the norm. And I like and, and had success with that because normally like, you know, a coach would see this. And if the, the coach didn't know, like, how far they threw, they might be like, nah, that's not how you do it. And then you tell them, oh, he threw 8490 and is one of the most decorated hammer throwers ever. And be like, oh, well, okay, keep doing that. And I think that's a very important lesson for athletes is that there's no – well, I shouldn't say there's no wrong way. There's definitely wrong ways to throw hammer. <laughs> Let me just say that right off the bat. But you have to find the right way that works for you, you know, I bet you Vadim could not throw like Koji and throw far, like as far as he did. You know, this style suits him. And I think it's very, it's a very um good story about how one athlete can do something different than the others and still have the success that those had even more than most had. So I think that's why he's underrated. All right, and I think that goes very underappreciated because people just look at him like, oh, he's dope, so it doesn't even matter, you know, because he took a bunch of drugs and blah, 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 blah. And I say I don't care. You know why? Because almost everyone that meddled at the comps that he competed at, or <laughs> besides Koji and Cosmos, were basically banned for life. All right, so I don't care. He was competing against a bunch of other druggies. So, I don't care, all right? Their drugged up guy beat your guys' drugged up guys, all right? It, it, okay, it's not a, it's not a uneven playing field if everyone's taking drugs, okay? So, and also, even if you're taking drugs, that's, in my opinion, the stupidest argument ever. Because I could take steroids. I would not throw 8490. <laughs> I'm telling you that right now, all right? You, you, people just think, oh, you just take steroids and then you just... Turn into a world-class athlete. And no. First of all, you have to have the some of the best genetics ever. Alright? Because not everyone. You know, you can you can get anybody to throw like 50 meters in hammer. Or maybe even 60 meters if you're a good coach. Alright? When you start throwing 70 to 80 meters, that's when you're like, okay, not everyone could do this. Alright? No matter how hard they try, they could not do that. Especially 80 meters. Alright? So what happens is... 
normally, I think it goes very underappreciated. Like, just because you take drugs does not mean that you did not put in the work, all right? That you did not train your butt off, that you did not have some of the best technique of all time, and that you, you were the, one of the best competitors of all time, all right? And I just hate it when people just dismiss someone, oh, they took drugs. Like, okay, cool, they cheated, but, like, don't take everything away from what they did and just erase them from history, all right? That's not cool, all right? And I have huge respect for people like this, all right? And I respect people that throw far, all right? And when you're at this kind of level, you get this kind of stuff, so deal with it. All right, guess what? He got banned for life, but he didn't get his medals taken away. So shut up, okay? You, you, people that are, I mean, like, I guess technically drugs are, I mean, it'd be one thing if he was the only person taking drugs and then everyone else was clean, but let's be real here. Even though a lot of them did not test positive, come on now. You know, like you see like uh, Yuri Sadiq and Sergey Levinov, tell me they were not on stuff. All right. They were just in Soviet Russia. So, of course, they were never going to get tested at all because of the political climate. All right. <laughs> it's kind of like the Chinese weightlifters and just stuff like that. You know, like they're they're not going to get popped. You know, if Lu Zhaojun, after he retired, is the only person to ever get popped. And it was for EPO. And they had to sneak into China to do it. You know, like... It, <sighs> It's so stupid. Whatever. I'm not here to talk about drugs. I'm here to talk about why I think Vadim is crazy good and why I think he's very unique and underrated. Oh, the other reason why I think he's underrated is just because probably a lot of people just don't know who he is, especially people newer to the sport. If you've been around the sport and you don't know who he is, you're dumb. I'm sorry. Uh, I call it like it is. You know, if you don't know, that's like not knowing who Ivan Tikhon is or Koji. If you... If you, like, were alive and, like, present during this era, I mean, you got, yeah. if you don't know who he is, then I don't know what to tell you, you know, whatever. But let's get into it. So he does his winds, I've talked about that. His third wind, he that's where he gets his tension. So he's here, counters really well, boom, and then... If you notice, the other unique thing besides sitting super hard down is that he he kind of reaches a little long here. He still maintains his counter. But normally you see a lot more people sitting back uh, a little bit more. But on your first turn, uh, you want to be a little more relaxed. You don't have to sit back nearly as much because there isn't that much tension in the water compared to the other turns. So he does this. He kind of reaches really long. Uh, let me get a different one. He reaches super long to establish a good length on the hammer, good orbit. And I love this first turn. I think he has one of the best first turns ever. Keeps it super flat, which is beautiful. That's what I coach in hammer. And that's what most people coach in hammer with a few outliers. Um, but I think this is the best way to do it because it builds a more natural orbit. But, I mean, if you can have a higher high point on one and handle it, that's, I mean, some of the best people in history have done that. But the problem is, like, it's a lot harder to handle that kind of pressure. And it's a lot easier to lose their orbit in a counter. So, I, I teach especially for people who aren't really, really good to, to go flat because I think it's a lot easier and builds a better orbit but that's just my opinion i love the way that he's here really lets the hammer go way past him before his legs move so really nice here really nice deep catch which i personally like but there are different very variants on thought about how deep you should catch in my opinion, it doesn't matter. As long as it goes far and as long as you catch it with it basically in line with your right with your right knee, it, I think it's fine. But this is a super deep catch, and then he sinks hard. Alright, he sinks. He's like parallel, a parallel squat. 
rounded back countering really nice and then here this is where he keeps it in line with his knees or well, with his right knee sorry and uh, a lot of people think that you're supposed to let it past you and stuff which you are but when you're going these types of speeds the hammer is gonna move you around so the hammer is moving so fast by the second turn that your body's just gonna not go with it but you're not gonna be as patient but the more important thing is you still need to let it pass zero the hammer still needs to get past zero that's the absolute minimum and what i mean by zero is that if you're standing oops uh if you're standing the back of the ring i know uh i know he starts kind of offset uh, let me get this okay so you want to let it pass your belly button basically so if you're facing the back of the ring you got to let it pass your belly button all right otherwise you're going to start pulling and dragging the hammer so you got to at least get it in line with you with the with the belly button but because you're going such because he's going such speeds that a lot of people will never never experience in their life because a lot of people cannot throw 82 meters uh and that's why i think this throw was or it was 80 plus so a lot of people will never throw 80 in their lives so, a lot of people won't experience this, but according to theory, and you see this with people who throw like 70 plus, is that the hammer is moving so fast that the body is naturally going to move faster, but the hammer, if you notice, is always moving past him before his right leg picks up. So, I know it's hard to see. The hammer is right here. Judging by where his hands are, um, well, it was very hard to see due to the quality of this video because this was in 2005 and the speed that the hammer's going, but it's always going to go past him, all right? So really nice, really tight feet, really close to the knees, not super wide legs, which you do not want in hammer. You want super tight feet and super tight knees. Amazing catch. So in hammer, you want this slight tilt right here, all right? Because this is what gets you to go here. If, if you do not have this tilt, that probably means that you're pulling, all right? You want this tilt because you want this right shoulder to be higher than your left shoulder. And if and this, I'm speaking as a right-handed thrower. Um, because if your left shoulder is higher than your right, you're gonna, you're gonna end up pulling you're not, it's going to be harder to push the hammer and you're probably going to start, well, I mean, pulling, but also lose your orbit a lot and you're going to, and you're going to lose a lot of tension. So you always want this kind of tilt, this, if this will stop, this kind of downwards tilt a little, and you see this with any great hammer thrower. All right. Beautiful catch again. And now, so if you notice, so he sits here. And then he stands here. So he doesn't stay low forever. All right. So that's very important. He stays, he gets low to establish, to get more length over the hammer. But he can't do that because you got to use your leg. So he's here. Boom. Here. Beautiful. Right here. Beautiful catch. Yeah. Okay. He has one more turn. Uh, I lost track. So he's here, and he's really sitting back. You notice the hammer, or his shoulders are a little level. And he's just letting it past still. Because normally, if he were to pick up right here, he'd be pulling. But because he's not, and he's still staying grounded to here, and I think the hammer's... Judging by his hands, like around here or something, it's hard to tell. But boom, right here, he's always letting it pass them. Always let the ball pass you. If you turn ahead of the ball, that means you're moving faster than the ball, and the ball's not moving fast. And the whole point of hammer is to make the ball move faster than you, or else you it will not go far. All right, it's the same thing in discus, shot, and jab. If the if you are moving faster than the implement, you cannot accelerate it because 
you have all the energy in your body instead of all the energy in the implement. All right. So it's very important to always let it pass you. You always want while you're grounded. All right. And, you know, you want to try and stay as grounded as, as long as possible. But when you're moving these speeds, he is trying to be as grounded as possible. But because he's just moving, well, I should say the ball is moving so fast. He's just not staying grounded for very long. All right. Or else, you know, the ball would slow down. So he's just kind of not moving with the ball, but he's reacting to the ball. All right. So that's what you want to think of it. Um, and, and this kind of thing is. Your body needs to react to the ball, not the ball react to you, all right? So that's a very important distinction. So he's here. All his turns pretty much look the same after his first one. And then beautiful release. You notice that he's countering back hard. And all his weight is on this right leg instead of on this left leg. And I've said it time and time again. If you don't have this type of angle with the weight on the right leg, that probably means you lost your counter and the hammer is going to go this way. Oh my God. What did I just do? Uh, this way or into the cage, or you're just going to fall out of the ring because you lost your counter and the hammer pulled you that way, which you don't want to do. The whole point of the counter is to prevent the ball going this way. Well, not, not going that way, but the ball pulling you that way. All right, so it's here, boom, stays in the ring. And yeah, it's ideal to stick it, like stick stick this, but when you're going these kind of speeds and you're in comp, you're not worried about the most technical throw in the world. You're just trying to stay in. And, you know, he's balanced. He's totally in control of his entire body and what he's doing. He lands. And I wish it recorded the, the, um, the, the yell. I love the yell he makes. Because he just basically yells at the hammer until <laughs> until it lands. And I love that. Gerd Cantor did that too. Uh, even on T-Con did that. The Belarusians were famous for doing that. And I think that's just awesome. Um, but that's a personal thing for me. You don't have to do that. Um, but yeah, overall, I just think he's a beautiful hammer thrower. And shows what you can do with different technique. I think he's a big outlier in hammer throwing. You know, because I think he's just so consistent over 80. And you have to have good technique to be consistent. All right. So super good technique to be consistent. Especially at these types of distances. And I think that goes underappreciated too. Is that the Belarusians, like Ivan Tikon and... Um, Vadim Debutovsky was some of the most consistent throwers ever in hammer throw. And honestly, it's not easy to be consistent in hammer because just so much stuff can go wrong. You know, you pull one turn or you you catch one turn wrong, you're done. You, you, you can't really recover very well. You Maybe you can, but it takes away a bunch of distance. So you got to be perfect with everything. And you won't be perfect, but you got to be as close to perfect as you possibly can. So I think it goes very underappreciated how good their technique was and how repeatable it was for them. Now, do I think Vadim is a good technical model? Well, it depends. I think he could be. You know, I think you can learn a lot from him. All right. I think, honestly, I think he's a better technical model than Ivan Tikon. Um, if I had to pick between the two, but... Because I think he's a little more stereotypical of a technically good hammer thrower. Um, but I think anybody could be a good technical model if it's a good technical model for you. So, I mean, maybe just try a couple times throwing like him. Who knows? You might throw far. He did. But I wouldn't get hung up on it. In my opinion, there's no one good technical model. I think you got to take things from other throwers that um that work for you you know like like speaking for me as a shot putter i i throw i start out the back of the ring kind of like zane weir a little and then and then I, I have a right leg like walsh and then my middle is like well 
Walsh. <laughs> oh, then my finish is more like Weir or uh, Fabrio. You know, it's, um, and you kind of have to like pick and choose like which ones work for you and stuff. Like when I threw discus, I start out the back like Gerd Cantor and then I tried to be super low when I went out on my left, like, like Hadati, like Ishan Hadati. And then, um, I tried to finish like Cantor and stuff like that. And then when I was in high school, my technical model was, um, Virgilius Alekna, you know, and discus. So you just have to pick and choose. I don't think you should throw exactly like one thrower. I believe that you need to choose different aspects from a thrower, from, from different throwers that will work for you. And I think that's how you got to approach technical models. Because if you just do one, one thrower, this one, like not everyone's built like Vadim W. Not everyone's six, four and like two fifty, you know? And like, you know, like a lot of people aren't built like that of just like pure muscle. <laughs> so, and a lot of people don't have the attributes that he does. So maybe a lot of people can't throw like him. Who knows? That's one of the great mysteries of throwing is, you know, if you copied exactly like this person, would you throw f as far as them? Who knows? Um, but yeah, I think, I think he could be a good technical model. I think his first turn is phenomenal. And I think that that maybe can be copied. Uh, that would be an aspect that I would take away. Um, if I was to use him as a technical model, um, but you know, to each his own, um, I personally wouldn't whine like him because I couldn't, but because I think it's a little too relaxed, but it worked for him, but you just need to find what works for you. But I think that's the end of the video. I think I said my piece. Sorry. I went on that big rant about, um, drugs or like steroids, not like cocaine or anything, but like, um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys gained a little appreciation for Vadim. And see you all later. Merry Christmas. Oh, sorry. I'll link all his, um, uh, his accomplishments, personal best, and hide and wait in the video description as well. In case I didn't say that. But I say that for every video. But, yeah, happy holidays and see you all later.